You did talk. I will. Good no, I can. I know how to contact her. It is Megan Barrett, and I'm the director here at the Iowa mm -hmm. Quilt Museum. And I am sitting in a different location than you usually see me for these Tuesday meetings. I am in the upstairs space of our uh, museum today, the newly renovated space. And I'm sitting with this whole collection of wonderful merchandise from our quilt, uh, our online and in-person gift shop because today we are joined by some artists, five in fact, artists, who provide pieces or works of art for our gift shop. And so in just a moment, we're going to meet Randall Parkin and Sarah King and Carol Trojanowski and Susan Schmidt and Tracy Van Kooten. And we're gonna hear about them as artists, the pieces that they make and specifically um, what they provide for the Iowa Quilt Museum gift shop. Um, so just take a little gander here at all of the wonderful things we're going to see. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping things before we get going. Do feel free to use your uh, use the chat window if you have things that you'd like to ask or add to the conversation. Um, Randall actually is also on our board of directors and she's going to be monitoring the chat window for me because my computer is really far away from me today. I can't reach my keyboard. I have this little mobile mouse, which I can reach, but I am unable to type. So um, she's gonna help us out with that. And before, the fin before we're finished today, I will ask all of the artists to input, put into the chat window how you can connect with them on social media, Instagram, Facebook, website, all of that good stuff. And I will be happy to share that out with anybody who's not able to get it. So I think I'm gonna nominate, I don't know, who should I nominate to start? Let's start with Sarah King. Sarah is a uh, Winterset resident right here with us. And she creates these beautiful, see if I can get them without knocking anything over these beautiful mosaics. Um, Sarah is a glass artist, and so she makes a lot of things that are not necessarily quilt themed, but specifically for the quilt museum, she makes these mosaic pieces. And I saw them at another place in town, found out that Sarah made them and said, hey, I want those in my gift shop or in our gift shop. And she was happy to oblige. So Sarah, I'm gonna turn the floor over to you for a few moments. Hi, um, yes, I'm Sarah of Red Thread Upcycles. Um, I started out primarily a, a sewer using upcycle materials, um, and then it kind of morphed into glass. Um, it's kind of whatever um, materials I have, whatever abundance of materials, and I was gifted a windfall of uh, repurposed stained glass from a church renovation um, maybe 10 years ago now. So, and I'm still using a lot of pieces from it. Um, yeah, I, I go through phases where I've done a lot of mosaics, um, um, trivets or glass on glass. Um, right now I'm doing a lot of sun catchers. Um, I like doing quilt blocks just because, uh, they're really colorful and I like the meanings behind them and, pretty symmetrical, pretty easy to cut and work with sometimes. Um, yeah. Um, is that a good introduction? It is. Tell me how you got started with this, um, this thing that you do, because you have not been doing this for very long, kind of in the scheme of things, right? No, I, I haven't. My background is in education. Um, I've always made things um, on the side. Um, I first got into mosaicing when um, we were renovating a house and I had to retile my bathroom floor. Um, and I kind of figured out that um, mosaics were pretty much the same process. Um, yeah, I've just kind of, I've gone back and forth between all mediums and um, I, yeah, let's see, I made the jump from education to making maybe strictly making uh, four or five years ago. Um, yeah, I just, 
I'd started an Etsy shop and it was getting a lot of traction and I was getting pretty busy with it. And yeah, I decided I wanted to take the leap and um, wanted to make things all day, even if that meant I had to waitress on the side or work at a greenhouse or yeah, but it's been good. And right now things have picked up enough, um, honestly, since COVID um, online sales that I'm just making strictly right now and working with my Etsy shop and customers. You have other local places, Sarah, where you um, that sell your works? Yeah, um, I have things in a shop in the East Village in Des Moines called Kin. Um, uh, Heartland Fiber in Winterset. There was um, been different times. I've had pieces there. Um, I know at the coffee shop, I had things for a while. So um, yeah, it just, it varies with what I can keep up with. You know, someone will make a request or put an order in, but sometimes it takes about six weeks or so before I have enough inventory to send a shop between all my online orders. Sure, sure. And you can go ahead and put it in the chat now if you want to, but I'll have you do it again later. Is how people can find your Etsy shop. Let's see. I was, I was trying to figure out, I'm not sure how to access my chat here. Oh, you're on a phone, aren't you? It's a little bit harder. Um, yeah, I'm on my Chromebook and it's acting kind of like a phone maybe. Yeah. So the, the name of your store is Red Thread Upcycles, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm primarily on Instagram. You can see a lot of my work and a lot of my process photos, and there's a link to my shop in there. I have a lot of folks contact me for custom orders and projects. So. Perfect. Perfect. Well, again, this is one of Sarah's um, quilt block mosaics. This is the churn dash. Um, and we started out with six of Sarah's blocks. Um, and we're down to just three. So we have this churn dash, we have a tulip um, design, and then we have a bear claw or a bear paw quilt block, which is very cool. So um, I have just actually added them to our online gift shop. I was very hesitant to do so because I'm not really sure that I want to figure out how to <laughs> and ship this one without it. <laughs> Um, but I have added it to the online gift shop and I will do my absolute best to pack it in a way. Bubble wrap should do the trick. The only kicker is they'll be a bit heavy. <laughs> but we are offering a flat $5 fee for our online gift shop um, for shipping anyway right now. So we're happy to ship those out. All right, so that's a little bit from Sarah. We're going to come back and see her a little bit later, and she's got her soldering iron all warmed up, and she might give us a little demonstration later if we have time. So I'm going to pass things over to Susan. I think I'm going to go to you next. So if you want to unmute yourself. Unmute. There yes. I am. Hi. Oh, all right. So Susan Schmidt is in Colorado, and Susan makes a line of greeting cards based on her paintings. And so right here, I've got one that's titled Peace. Um, I'll bring it a little bit closer. And we love these um, kind of quilted woman. Um, I think that's the name of the line. Yes. And I yes. am a super huge fan of these, um, these funny ones, um, women I might have known. And this one says, masquerading as a normal person is hard work. And inside it says, you're born to stand out. I love that one so much that I crossed out the happy birthday and just mailed it to my friend just because. <laughs> um, I know. Because I didn't care whether it was her birthday or not. And that just makes it even more fun. So Susan, tell us more about yourself. Well, um, I'm older. I'm 65. And uh, I raised kids first and really didn't get to start working on what I wanted to do with art until I was in my late 50s. And so from the very beginning, I, I was always intrigued with stories of women. And I really like senior women because they've lived long lives and they have lots of experience and they have very good stories to share. Um, so I think their history is rich. And I always focused on painting them. I, I, I painted a lot from older photographs of my own family. 
And as I developed and, and you see those greeting cards that I have from it, um, I really wanted to uh, do something that was more focused on fine art instead of illustration. And I wanted to uh, celebrate women, but I wanted to do it draped in something kind of the way, you know, Japanese women are in kimonos or even those beautiful Klimt paintings and, and all the ornate patterned fabric are a Native American woman wrapped in a tribal blanket. So the thing that I understood from my own family history was a quilt. And it's, I know it's not uniquely American, but it has become that for us. Quilts really represent American life and having come from the Midwest, that's really what my focus was. And I just think they, um, the quilt itself, when I wanna paint a woman and express her feelings, I think the quilt, can kind of tell a story much the same way as any quilt that you have from your own family. I mean, especially if it's made from, from old fabric or scraps and you can, you can touch it and you can feel the hand that made the quilt. So that has always been uh, the focus of my work. So I, I paint these, um, these very, they're actually, they're, they're pretty large, these paintings of women draped in quilts and um, try to tell a story about them with it. I usually have them uh, photographed um, professionally. And then from there, I can produce a greeting card with it, uh, which is my primary method of selling things. But I also um, will you know, have like a, a, a reproduction print kind of like that of a quilt. So I'll do that too. So a lot of times you can find a greeting card, but you can also get prints if you just want to have something like that to hang in your house because the the, the paintings are really big and they don't fit in everybody's house. So I, I try to do the the prints for people. But um, so that's really the focus of what I do. I'm I'm thrilled. You know, my greeting card company is a a family business. My son and I run the company together, and um, uh. I think that's pretty much it. You know, you can find us on, on Instagram if you want to um, see my process. And I, I carve all my own stamps to make all my own patterns and designs. Um, if you are a collector of American Quilting Magazine, back in, um, I think it was like the March issue in 2017, there's like a really, maybe a, a four or five page article about my process and how I make a, how I paint a quilt and talk about, you know, more details about how, what my process is. Fantastic. And you yeah. have other um, paintings in your gallery. Um, I might have you kind of give us a little gallery tour, or sorry, of your studio. I would love to, sure. Tour a little bit later, um, but let's keep kind of going on our round robin thing. And so I'm going to remove this spotlight and let's pass things over to Tracy. Tracy Van Kooten is also a Winterset resident. Um, and you're probably the newest at this of all of the folks we have here. Um, Tracy has a laser, laser cutter, laser imprinter. What do we call it? A uh, cutter engraver. Okay. <laughs> So one of our board members had gotten wind of Tracy and her new endeavor and reached out and asked her if she could do some things for the quilt museum. So here, I, sorry, I need to add my spotlight. We've got this um, wooden ornament that's got our Iowa Quilt Museum logo, which is the Iowa block, um, which nobody likes to piece. Well, I shouldn't say nobody, but it's very labor intensive. We've got this two-toned um, Ohio Star with the Iowa Quilt Museum in the middle. Um, and it's got this overlay of the beautiful red wood, which we love. And I can't decide my favorite among these three because they're all so wonderful. And this is the beautiful wood on wood tone double wedding ring. Um, and so these really make great souvenirs for folks who are visiting the Iowa Quilt Museum and wanting to take home something that's a little less, um, a little less kitschy, I say. Um, that's got a little bit more panache to it. So Tracy, tell us your story. How'd you get going in this thing you're doing now? Well, um, I've been a graphic artist for about 20 years uh, working with print. 
And um, last year when, you know, COVID happened and uh, business started going down for us, people were not wanting to advertise. Um, I started working part-time um, and working from home. Um, and after a time, we, uh, my husband and I just decided we needed to find a way to, um, you know, make up some of this lost income. And I wanted to do something with my graphic arts experience. It's, you know, my favorite. It's what I do. And um, I didn't want to go to work for somebody else. So I wanted to do something that, and something that we could do together. Um, so we started reading about all the wonderful things the lasers could do and uh, how they were coming down in price and people could have them in their homes and, and work. And so we just uh, decided to jump in and do it. And we got one in November. So just a few months ago, and we hit the ground running with Christmas ornaments and um, it's kind of gone from there, so. <laughs> and I think that it was maybe January, it was past Christmas um, when we had to create these for us, but we're working on other um, items that we might carry some engraved, laser engraved thimbles. Um, we've looked at a, a little wood inlay puzzle that we might be able to put together. Um, we're just kind of finessing some of those things. So um, from our standpoint, we're very fortunate to have connected with you um, because there are lots of things that we would love to pursue having our logo engraved on from <laughs> gift that standpoint. Um, and in addition to supporting artists who make quilt inspired uh, merchandise, um, which is kind of our focus today, we really appreciate it when we can support somebody who is operating their business right here in our own community. And we do that as much as possible. Tracy, do you have a website or Instagram or Facebook where people can connect with you? Yeah, uh, the name of our business is Backwoods Laser LLC. So our website is www.backwoodslaserllc.com. And um, you can find us on Facebook under that as well. And Etsy, um, not Instagram yet. <laughs> I've been busy. <laughs> so, Yeah, excellent. And Tracy is not able, she's not in her shop today. Um, she told me yesterday, our shop is not a place that we are going to broadcast from. <laughs> and I think we can all appreciate that on some level or another. I said, I'm with you, Tracy. My sewing room is absolutely not a place that I would ever broadcast. Uh, but we're if, overdue for an organization. <laughs> um, if you've got some other examples of your work, Tracy, we'll have you kind of share those when we, we come back. I do. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right. So that takes us to Carol T. Um, Carol Trojanowski is in Michigan, and Carol makes these. Um, quilted cards, we call them Carol T quilted cards in our gift shop. And these are three inch by three inch actual quilts um, attached to the front of a linen type card. And they can be mailed to your favorite pen pal for the cost of a, a first class stamp. They don't even weigh any extra. And just recently we've added this item to our gift shop and these are eight by 10 matted um, is their final, but the inside is, is it three and a half by four and a half, Carol, or three and a half by five? No, these are about four by six. Oh, yes. The Thank quilt you. itself is a four by six. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if an actual four by six quilt um, with an eight by 10 mat around it. So, Carol, tell us some more about this, your process and how you got started and all that jazz. Oh, my gosh. I learned to sew as a kid decades ago when I was, I don't know, 11 or 12 years old. And, you know, I always messed around with fabric. And I think one of the first pieces I made, my sister um, gave me a, a construction paper flying duck that her son had made when he was like in, I don't know, third or fourth grade and said, well, here, make this out of fabric. And I did that a very long time ago. And then I did one for my parents for their 40th wedding anniversary of our house. And 
I just really enjoyed it, but I've taken, I, I didn't do anything with it at the time. That was a long time ago. And I um, have taken painting and drawing classes as an adult, jewelry making. I went through, uh, after I retired, I um, did a lot of jewelry making, had a lot of fun with that. But I'm a retired uh, elementary school teacher and our school system didn't have art teachers, which was fine with me because I would try to find projects and learn about artists and coordinate art activities with literature or history or whatever we were doing. So that was always a lot of fun. And then I got to retire. And then I took a um, uh, quilt class to make landscape art quilts out of fused fabric from a Michigan uh, person who's quite well known. Her name is Ann Loveless. And she did this huge, huge picture of Sleeping Bear Dunes in Michigan, which is a national seashore and won a couple hundred thousand dollars at Art Prize in Grand Rapids. <laughs> so I took the class and I was like, oh my gosh, I can do this when I made my first one. And then I, I started doing it and I really liked it. And I never quite mastered um, free motion stitching on my first Bernina. But then I read about the laser controlled stitch regulator on a Bernina and I went and treated myself to a new sewing machine. And oh my gosh, it just opened the whole world to me to be able to make these. And the cards came about two ways. Um, I met someone at an art show who said, well, what you gotta do is have a gimmick, something that's less expensive for people to buy than the bigger pieces of art that I make. And I was like, huh, someday I'll do that. And I thought, I don't know what it'll be. And then the young girl next door was having her birthday and I stitched one for her birthday and gave it to her and they, she just loved it. And then it just kind of grew from that. So, and I'm, that was probably about four or five years ago. And I, I just love doing it and trying different techniques and collecting fabrics and, you know, collecting little pieces of fabric all over the house. Cause they stick to me when I go upstairs <laughs> and so that's basically it. Yeah, because many of your pieces, you know, like I'm looking at this and the leaves are, you know, like a In triangle, like this is what I cut off of my corners. When yeah. <laughs> when I, so when I said, I yeah. my half the triangles. <laughs> they stick to me, they really, because I use fused fabric and, you know, then stitch it all down and you know, people often ask me, what is my favorite part of making them? And I always say, it's the next step because first I'm doing, you know, I do the backing and all that. And then I do um, put the sky on and then I start working in the, in the foreground and I'm like, okay, I like that, but I can't wait till I can start to add the other things. And then I can't wait till I can stitch it. And then I can't wait till I can add more to stitch it because as it develops, the stitching adds such a dimension to it. So it takes the kind of flat work and makes it look a little more quilty. Yeah, and for some of your things, the stitching, like in this one, the stitching is actually the flowers, the purple flowers. Um, yes, I do make, I, yeah, I do them with the rapid stitching on the stitch regulator. It's, it's really useful to me. Yeah, so. Cool, cool, cool. All right, um, and you've got, do you have some process photos? I know you were looking for those earlier. I couldn't find them, but um, I do have a website and I was going to work on posting those last week and I didn't get to it, of course. Um, but the website is www.caroltquilts.com and you can reach me through there and my email is in there and contact information. I don't sell from the internet, but people who like my work contact me and then I usually email back and forth with them or we chat on the phone and, and go from there. And I do post on Instagram too. I think it's Carol T Quilts. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it is because I think I have a personal one too, but it's Carol T Quilts. And so I'll put in my newer work out there mm -hmm. for followers, so. Great. Okay, that means um, it's time to turn things over to Randall. And Randall Parkin is actually a board member here at the Iowa Quilt Museum. Um, and she's been a quilter for a few years and does lots of different things. You can tell us a list of all of the different things you've made over the course of your life if you'd like to. Um, but, <laughs> but what Randall makes that we carry in our gift shop um, are these clever little, I call them quippy cards, quippy quilty cards. This one says, I said, give me the credit card, dear. There's another one of a man 
stranded in the middle of the lake in a boat and the caption is all I said was do you really need more fabric and then the <laughs> is, the, is the genius behind this which is one of the best sellers in our gift shop we call it this this the quilted Iowa gift cards blank inside um, but this represents every county in the state of Iowa with a different piece of fabric so tell us about yourself Randall well, I'm not going to list all the things I've tried because like everyone here who does creative stuff, you just make things, you know, from the time I was a kid, I tried to, I started to make things. I started learning to sew when I was eight and I've dabbled in that kind of thing, garment sewing, quilting off and on and painting and drawing. And um, I had a line of jewelry for about 15 years called Life's Little Merit Badges and all kinds of stuff. And I've gotten involved in the quilt museum and Megan talks me into a lot of things. One of which we saw a card much like our Iowa card. And I decided <clears throat> it was done with um, scrapbook papers cut in the shape of counties, but I decided to use batiks. So there are 99 different batiks in this little, little piece. It was really fun to do kind of a neat project to try to figure out how to, you know, do it big and then get it get it made card size. So that was fun. And I collect vintage photographs. I like, not necessarily like cabinet cards, but things that just kind of look amusing to me. I just, I like humorous things in old pictures and I can always think of something to go with them. You have the quippy little sayings in these quippy little yeah. cards. Yes. And that's kind of indicative of your your personality in some ways. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Very good. So Randall um, is not to be confused with this Rand Designs, um, which is a line of jewelry that we discovered kind of by accident because this is made by Randy Gish and her business name is the exact same as your email. And I think yes. we accidentally discovered it one day um, so I'm going to use that as a segue to kind of display a few of the other pieces um, that are in our in our gift shop that aren't necessarily represented today. Um, this is a very new. Uh, nobody saw that. This is a very new piece to our gift shop. Um, we've got several of these. Actually, let me take the price tag off. These are the cutest little darn pin cushions ever. And in the middle, this is a vintage um, linen with embroidery. And then there's some tatting along the bottom edge of that, um, some crochet, there's vintage beadwork on here. And then the rest of it is reproduction feed sack fabrics. Um, but they all start out and feature a little vintage um, linen in the middle. Oh shoot, Randall, I forgot. You have to unmute yourself again because this was the other thing we were supposed to talk about, which is Randall's project. This is your latest one. Yeah. This is your square mm -hmm. foot garden. Um, yes. And yeah. this is a new item to our gift shop just in time for spring, the square foot garden. So tell us about this little piece right here. Well, about uh, at least 10 years ago, I was helping a friend with her booth at Quilt Market. And we met one of the owners of a well-known fabric, batik fabric company. And he was talking to us about all the ends that come off the bolts of, of batiks. And he just, you know, it was such a waste to throw them away. So he sent us this enormous carton full of batik ends, which was just, you know, not everybody in our quilting group was as enchanted as we were. So I decided to play with a little bit we did, <clears throat> we were gonna have a four inch block exchange. So one of the gals did this. So they're all four inches. We have a wonky log cabin kind of thing and everybody did different things. But I think, I think the piece I gave you has my first one. Um, so I decided that there should be something else in there. So here's the four inch. This is the four inch piece of 
pieced block and then I put, I applicate a flower on it and then decided, just pick this up last year during the COVID thing when everybody was, you know, trying to figure out things to do, put a little piece of batting in it and then I fastened it or sewed it onto a six and a half inch piece. And then now what do you do with this? So I decided to make a garden, make it look like soil. So that's how kind of how that evolved over a long time because I'd had those pieces just done in by hand, you know, in my little sewing basket for a long time and decided to do something with them. And they're a little bit similar to Carol's um, cards actually in that there's kind of layers that grow out from the background and it's some um, raw edge applique. I don't know if it's fused or not, but. No, no, just, I just took little pieces of fabric and started playing with them. Cool. Sorry, I forgot that. All right, That's so I'm okay. going, to keep going through my table and just showing some of the other items of the artists who couldn't join us today. Um, this is a line of pin cushions. Let's see if I can get it out of the reflection. Um, and these are made from vintage um, egg cups or jewelry holders or little tchotchkes. And Martha Clatt and Marty Clatt of Adel puts a little. Um, you know, velvet in here, pushes them up and makes a cute, cute, cute little um, vintage pin cushion. We have the best seam rippers that are made by a man who lives in the area. And they are hand turned out of various woods. And then they turn around like this and you've got a wonderful seam ripper. Um, and then you just put it right back inside. If you spend much time with your seam ripper like I do, you want one of these because it's much more comfortable in your hand than those little plastic jobbies that come with your sewing kit. Um, we've got these quilt hangers, um, which are made by a local woodworker. And this part in particular is, is really unique because it's meant to go over your door. Um, so then you just loosen this little knob here, stick your quilt up in it, tighten it back up, and you can hang a quilt right over your door. You could hang, even hang a square foot garden quilt that way. And then we've got some really unique lines of jewelry. Um, this, these are made by um, Julie Letvin, and she lives here in Iowa, and her company name is Me and My Stitches. And these are one and a half inch quilt blocks. And they are paper pieced, and you can actually see on the back side where she leaves the paper piece pattern. And then the whole thing is encased in acrylic, in acrylic. This is a one and a half inch block. Um, this is a one inch block, a square and a square. And again, on the back side, you can see the actual paper piece pattern. She signs each one so you know it's authentic. And then Randy Gish that we um, alluded to earlier makes this quilt inspired jewelry out of polymer clay. And so here's a little pair of earrings and she's got little pendants and charms if you are a charm bracelet person. Turn around. And then the newest, one of the absolute newest items in our gift shop are these darling little quilted pot holders um, with the flower design. We have a local quilter who has been supplying us with pot holders basically since we opened almost five years ago. But this is a new design she's trying out um, with these cute little flowers. And I've got about 10 of these in various colors and they are up on our website as well. Um, they are quilted and they have insole bright in the middle to protect your hand or your uh, countertop or tabletop, whatever. Um, and then there's some free motion quilting in there as well. And all of these items are available on our online gift shop, which you should be able to see right now. So this is just a little preview of what our online gift shop looks like. We've been trying to up the sophistication level of our photographing lately of our merchandise. So you'll see some of them are in this kind of new style with the white background. Um, and a few are still our old style. We used to photograph on black and now we really like the look of this um, photographing on white. But 
here are those um, vintage tchotchke pot, or, um, pin cushions that I mentioned. This one's a little bird, a little boy with a guitar, um, a little cat with green eyes. They're just darling. So, um, And you can find our website, our online gift shop, through our website. And our website is iowaquiltmuseum.org. And Terry just typed that in for us. Thank you, Terry. She is on the ball for us. So, um, Sarah, Tracy, Susan, Carol, Randall, you want to go ahead and unmute yourselves again. I'm just going to put us all in a spotlight. So if you're looking in gallery view, you should be able to see all six of us here in just a moment. Um, and we'll let people kind of give us a little bit more of a tour of their spaces if they'd like to or answer questions or ask questions of each other. Um, I know, Susan, maybe you were going to show us around your gallery a little bit or your studio a little bit more. Sure. Why don't you start? Want to do that? Okay. Let me move my camera. Okay. So I'll try not to uh, shake you up too much when I move the camera around. Okay. So we took, we have one of these houses in Colorado, houses are built into the hills. So when you come in the first floor of my house, you walk in, this maybe would have been a family room and it's my studio. So it's nice and bright. So um, what I have, are uh, I'm accumulating work right now, like I said, for an exhibit. So it's the tools of my trade. Obviously books are a huge amount of reference for me. And, um, I keep some prints and some original art up on the walls. Uh, I also have, you know, the, the pieces that are in the process and, and larger pieces. This, this particular one is what I'm working on right now. But I also have, <laughs> tucked in my studio, is all the pieces for a green card company. So I do a lot of small, little paintings when I'm thinking about uh, a concept and what I want to make into a painting. So I might make like, this is about women swimming. And so I probably made 20 or 30 paintings of women at the beach to come up with an idea of what feels good. Um, and eventually I will settle on something and use it. Uh, I'm tremendously focused on pattern. Um, and I do, I have to say, I carve all my own stamps. Um, so when you see any kind of little marks on a painting of mine, they're usually stamped on. And I've carved, there's, there's a leaf, this is a rosebud. And I'll try to repeat the shapes throughout the painting to give it a little more continuity. Just like if you fall in love with a fabric and you buy that design in three colored ways. That's kind of what I'm doing when I will repeatedly use a stamp in a painting. So um, I think that kind of gives you a good idea of inspiration. Of course, if you know, you, I have good windows and I have views of the West and the South. So I can see oh. from Pikes Peak all the way up to Rocky Mountain National Park from these windows. So that's pretty mm -hmm. inspirational too. Um, do you have any questions? What medium do you paint in? Um, I work specifically in acrylic because it dries fast, especially out here where there's no humidity. And I don't, you can't stamp with watercolor or other, mm. you know, oil doesn't dry fast enough. So everything is acrylic, which I love. It gives me so many more options of ways to play with the paint. Makes sense. Yeah. This is a great time. This is a great time for all our guests. If you have a question, you feel free to unmute yourself um, and you can just pop it in um, anytime. You can also pop into the chat window. I am watching the chat window. Even though I can't type, I can verbally answer your question or pass it on to one of our artists. Um, Sarah, you want to give us a demonstration? I know you've got your soldering iron on. Is it still hot? 
Uh, you're still muted, hon. Unmute. There we go. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you'd shown one of my mosaics, um, a trivet. Um, I was going to show real quick what the glass on glass mosaics look like. Um, let's see. Ooh, Can you see that? Pretty. That's pretty. Yeah, so back when I was able to do art shows, I used to do a bunch of those uh, primarily, but since COVID, I've been doing a bunch of smaller sun catchers since they're um, really a lot easier to ship. So hmm. right now I'm working on a sun catcher. We'll see how this works. Whoa. Can you see what I'm doing there? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> okay. So you have your stained glass pieces and you wrap the edges with a copper foil tape and you flux the pieces with a chemical that gets the impurities out, I'm told. And then you use a lead tin mix and you initially tack the pieces together Kind of like sewing when you pin things together to keep it from moving. Mm. Are you get? Can you see that clearly? Oh, there we go. Yeah. And then you just follow the line down. I really like working with glass. I love the sewing I've done, but quilting honestly has really intimidated me. It's so, it's so mathy. You have to be so exact if you want all your angles to end up nice. So um, I don't know. It just seems like glass has been a little more forgiving. And if I can do um, quilt patterns, all the better. Uh, this is going to be a a rainbow colored honeycomb that I'm working on right now. And all of us quilters are thinking, oh, it could be a grandmother's flower garden because it's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see if I can get enough tack down that I can kind of hold it up that you can. There's lots of great um, pieces, quilt blocks out of hexagons. Let's okay. see. Just a sec. Sorry if I'm making everybody dizzy. I don't know oh, if you can see what that will look eventually when it's all soldered. Yeah. And then I just solder Cute. little jewelry <laughs> hooks in the corner. And a lot of my materials, I mean, from the glass down to the chain, a lot of it's repur repurposed. The glass, like I said, um, I, sometimes I'll use broken bottles and the old remnants of church windows or um, I'll take apart old pieces of stained glass and use that. Um, I hit a lot of garage sales, so. That's a good sale glass. Mm -hmm. you cut your pieces of glass before you can start, right? What's that? You have to cut your glass before, because it's usually not in those shapes. Yeah, yeah, so what I do, I'll take you back over here. Um, yeah, what I do is I will start with a, I'll draw out a pattern and then trace it onto my glass. So I'll cut something now and show you how I do that. If you can see. Mm -hmm. I don't know, there we go. So one order I'm working on right now is a, a like a raindrop strand. So I have a bunch of different blue colored raindrops and a glass that I put hooks on and then chain together with little bits of chain in between. So there's my pattern and I've just traced it onto the glass with one of my kids' markers. This is a glass cutter and you score the glass so you scratch it it's got a sharp little wheel okay and then i flip it over give it a couple taps 
and it cuts along where I scratched it. So, and I'll clean up the edges and snip those off with some pliers. Yeah, and then it's still really rough. It's in no shape to foil yet, but I have a glass grinder mm. that I can sand the edges down to get it so that it's nice and smooth and ready to tape. So. And that's probably not a process that's meant for videoing. It's probably loud and messy. <laughs> it, yeah, the, the grinding I thought would be a little noisy. Yeah. So yeah. You'll just have to take my word for, for that. <laughs> Pretty cool. Carol, do you have some work laying around that you can do? I do. First of all, here's, um, let's see, I'm just gonna do this one here. So a lot of people, this one is the three and a half by four and a half, and people are always fascinated by the back. Oh, yeah. Where they can see all the stitching that I've done. Mm -hmm. And that's just a little one on the big ones. Oh, my God, it's overwhelming. So <laughs> let me switch. Let me switch my camera. This one right here, um, I tend to work in the seasons. So I put together the three inch squares into the mat and it's called Four Seasons. And of course, none of them are ever alike. I do. No cards are ever alike. Everything is all original. So here's some more of the three and a half by four and a half. And then here's a couple, there's a spring one and a summer one. And then I do the 11 by 14 size. This one's fun. Um, we had a friend here from Puerto Rico who had never seen the Northern Lights. So we made our own version and that was kind of fun. But they're all different, you know, and you can see all the fabrics, mostly batiks. Um, when, I, when I'm at shows, people always want to look at every size of every picture that I have before they make their decision. And again, a lot of lake scenes. The winter ones are very popular because I think all that shiny, mm -hmm. they don't look that nice on the online, but in person. And then here we'll in process. These will become three inch cards and you can see that, you know, I build up the layers. Um, there's probably I don't know, six different greens in here along with the beiges and the trees. And hang on while I walk, I'm gonna show you my sewing machine with its laser um, attachment that enables me to do the um, stitches, like basically every direction, every size. When people do free motion, usually, you know, the faster you go, you have to move your hands and your, your foot <laughs> fast and your hands at the same time. And this just kind of takes care of all of it. This is another piece I have that's a larger piece that's called the confetti art or it's all shredded fabric. So there's thousands of pieces of shredded fabric on there that's very tiny. And it's piled up anywhere from a half inch to an inch thick and I put the netting on the tool and then free motion stitch through all of it and that's what you get and here's a larger fall scene. Of course with water in the background that tends to be one of my favorite things. Um, I, my cards and my work is also available at um, the National Quilt Museum in Paducah. Um, where else? A number of uh, galleries in Michigan, um, the Kalamazoo Art Institute, your shop, the Oliver Center in Frankfurt, Michigan. And I just got a new client, the Secret Garden in Empire, Michigan. And Empire is the gateway city to national um, the seashore, the Sleepy Bear Dunes National Seashore. So that's kind of fun. That's and I love making them. And here's one, we say that, we mentioned that you can um, mail them for the price of a first class stamp. And then we say they're also suitable for framing. And so this is one that we've taken, this is one of our actual cards um, with the three inch by three inch center. We took it to the shop and had it framed up um, and if this is a professional framing job, but of course you could frame it yourself in a, a, a five by seven or an eight by seven, eight by 10 with a mat. Um, but this is right. Yeah. You know, when you're sending somebody a card. Um, you're also sending them a little piece of art, um, which I think makes it a original really, art. Yeah. 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 Which makes it a really great, um, gift, especially for somebody who, you know, we all have that person who's so hard to buy for it. We probably have multiple persons who are hard to buy for it because we just don't, you know, we just don't need stuff. Um, but beautiful yeah. things are always appropriate. Thank you. 
Tracy, do you have a few more things laying around that you can show us of what you're doing with your laser engraving these days? Yeah, um, I've got one of the, uh, well, some samples of the uh, thimble that I got That's going. Good. I'm so. glad you brought that because I didn't grab one. So this is <laughs> in our gift shop yet, but it's coming. Yep. Yep. And um, Let's see, I've, um, this was really popular uh, around Easter. I was selling oh, that's cute. Uh, Easter basket tags, personalized. So, and um, just started getting into um, photo engraving. I had a, uh, a memorial that I'm working on. Hope to do more with this. Nice. And I got Mother's Day on the horizon. So cutting boards. <laughs> yes. I like that. Fantastic. <clears throat> so do we, let's see. Jill, how do you edge them? Let's see. That was meant for Carol, right? Carol, what do you do to finish the edges of your quilts after you cut them? Oh, and I, sorry, I've muted you. My fault. Okay. Uh, basically with the rotary cutter and then some of them I do with the more organic and I hand cut the little indentations all the way around to make it look I don't know. I think it's more interesting when they have that little mm -hmm. um, rough cut edge. Now, I did not realize that you make them in kind of a long horizontal piece and then you cut them into the three inch. Um, so you really, your last. I do. Part, yeah. But I often like in the strip, because I was working on a series, I believe these are supposed to be summer. They didn't get the leaves on them yet. Um, like for orders that I get, I just finished an order of 24 cards for one shop. And I like every three and a half inches change the sky or change the foreground or change so that you wouldn't even know it's from the same strip at all. <laughs> sure, sure. Well, um, to our guests, if you want to go ahead and type in your information again, kind of now that we're nearing the end of how people can find you on Instagram or um, Facebook or your website, how people can interact with you. Oh, I gotta get the right spotlight. Here we go. Um, and then remember that you can find all of these items on the Iowa Quilt Museum gift shop, which is iowaquiltmuseum.org. That's actually our main website. And up in the top right hand corner, there is a little button that says shop our online store. Of course, if you're in Winterset and you're here to see our quilted garden exhibit, we would love to have you come in person. Um, we do have $5 shipping right now on all orders, any orders in our online gift shop. We have a wonderful variety of books um, and other merchandise. Um, we purchase merchandise from other wholesalers as well. So there's lots of things to choose from. Um, but we're just really happy to be able to help support local artists um, who are making beautiful things that are quilt inspired through our gift shop. And of course, sales support the Iowa Quilt Museum as well. So Randall, Carol, Carol Susan, Tracy, and Sarah, anything else that you want to add before we close things up? Thank you. Thank you for including me. Thanks. Yeah. And thank you all for joining us today. And thank you to those who are watching and for your support of the Iowa Quilt Museum. When I post this video on YouTube for people to view if they weren't able to log in in person today, I will go ahead and add in um, the links for people to be able to find you as well so they can connect with you um, and your own respective ways. But thanks so much 
to all of you and we look forward to seeing you again. Our next week's um, program, uh, we will have Pam Weeks back. She is our curator for our Quilted Garden exhibit and she'll be taking us on part two of the gallery walk through the Quilted Garden exhibit, Floral Quilts from the New England Ooh. Museum. So join us every Tuesday at 12 through the end of this month. Have a wonderful afternoon, everybody.